Okay, in this exercise, after we have finished using the PIX image command to load in the digital still image, either in JPEG or PNG, so we're trying to explore the use of the digital video within the pure data. So again, we come with the standard options. So we have the gem window, create, destroy, and the rendering toggle box. And we have the gem head, which indicates the beginning of the graphical rendering. So towards the end, we have the rectangle. And you can see that we have put in two numbers after the rectangle, 4 and 3, which indicate the width and the height of this particular rectangle. Of course, you can put it within the inlet, the second one and the third one, to indicate the the size, that's the width and the height. And if you do not want to put in, for example, if you have just a fixed size for the rectangle, you can also put in it within the rectangle object box after the name of the rectangle. So the appearance of this particular patch will be a big rectangle with occupies more of the space within the gem window. Similar to the case we are using digital image with the pix image command, we will introduce two objects over here. The first one is the one we have come across in the last exercise, that's the pix texture. We still need to use the pix texture command to render the image on top of the rectangle. And before the pix texture, we'll use another new command. The command is the frame. So we have a new object called the pix frame. So again, it's come with the prefix PIX that indicate this processing digital pixel image. And the name afterward is the film, which indicate is talking about digital video. In order to make use of a digital video, we also have to open the file before we can pass it to the texture and render it on top of the rectangle. To open, we use the same message, open, and then with the name of that particular video. So when we are working with the Macintosh computers, most of the digital video, they come with the MOV format, the QuickTime format. And if you are using, for example, window machine, you may have a chance to use the window media, WMV format. And in Macintosh, a lot of cases, it's likely that you can also use the MPEG-4, MP4 format. So that's the basic command of using the digital video on as a way to map the texture on top of a graphical image. If we take a look of the pixel frame, it comes with a lot of other input and output. We will look into each of them individually. So before we try to play out with this particular patch, we have to add in one more thing which used to control the playback of this particular video. So we have an auto message. Either we can have auto zero or auto one. We can have a look of the difference. You can see that all the connections, the open, the autos, are connected to the first inlet, the left mode inlet, that's the hot inlet. And there's one more inlet on the right hand side, and two more outlets. 
beside the primary outlet on the left hand side. So let's start the patch. And then we can click on the open. So once we click on the open message, the video will be shown on top of the rectangle. But at this point, you can see that it's a still image. So it doesn't appear to be a digital video. So until we press the auto one command, the video start to play. You can notice that the video start playing from the beginning and then towards the end and go back to the beginning again. So in the form of a loop. So if we click on the auto zero again, you can stop the playback. So the auto is a kind of auto control of the playback of the video. With the zero, it stop and then it will wait for you to control which particular frame you would like to display. So normally it's the beginning of the video. And with the auto one, it will start to play back from the beginning to the end and then look back again. Besides using the two individual messages at auto zero and auto one, we can consider to simplify the notation by using parameter. So this is the data size we have come across in the last exercise. For example, instead of putting zero and one together, we can use the data one over here. And we remove this one. And we put a toggle box on top of this message. So the mechanism of this one is whenever you click the toggle box and produce a cross, this is our number one. The number one will pass to this message and the one the number over here will replace the data size one and the auto one will be sent to the pixel frame. And when you click the box again, it turns into an empty box. So that is the zero. And the zero is again similarly passing through the auto box with auto zero. And then with the auto zero message passed to the pixel frame to stop the video. So we can have a look of the demonstration which is essentially the same as what you have seen in the last version. So without the clause, with the clause, this is an indicator of zero and one by using the toggle box and reduce the two auto message into one. And the next thing is we can have a look of those other inlets and outlets of the pix frame command. So one of the important parts of the other outlet is the last one, which is an indicator of the end of file. And it is a bang signal, actually. You can have a look of the effect. Once we have the payback of the video, you can pay attention to this particular bang box. Whenever the video reach the end of itself, the bang will trigger, which indicate the end of the file is reached and it will go back to the beginning and look back again. So the reason of having this particular band is for the sake of programming in case for example if you would like to check the end of the payback of the file and then use it as a signal to trigger payback of other activities for example to switch 
to other video or to play another scene, we will make use of this bang to indicate that's the end of the original movie, such that we know how to or when to go to other next scenes at this point. So we'll come back to this later with some practical example. So other than the band, we have other information. The second outlet of that particular object picks film is the control information. We can have a look of the detailed information about the particular film you have loaded into the storage. In this one, we will make use of a new command called unpack. So actually, the second piece of information sent out from the PEX film is a list, and the list will contain three numbers. The first number is the number of frames within the movie, and the second and third pieces of number will be the size, that's the width and the height of the movie. So whenever we have a list of three number, we can unpack it into three individual number by using the unpack command, and also the three number indicator F, which in stand for the floating point number. So for each of the outlet, you can put in an individual number. And then we can have a look of this new version. If we open the file again, you can see the number will be shown here. So 46 is the number of frame of this particular movie, and 320 is the width, and 240 is the height of the video. And with this piece of information, you can have control, for example, the playback position of the film, and also how you can arrange the movie on top of your projection screen in the jam window. One last piece of information you can make use of is the second inlet of the PIX film command you can put in a slider over here, or any piece of a number. So I make use of the slider at this point. Then we can have a look of the actual implementation. And if it disable the auto playback by putting in a zero in the auto command, instead we make use of this particular slider. You can have a look at the effect. You can actually control the playback of one specific frame within the video. And you can also notice that after I push the slider towards the right hand side, and at some point of time it stops to move the video. And the reason for that one is, if we take a look, the specification of this slider in the properties window, is indicates the left hand side is zero. So that means the left mode position represent a number zero. And the right hand side is 127. So that means when you slide the slider towards the right hand side, it indicates 127. So this number will form the frame number towards the PIX frame command. So if we take a look of the number 46 over here, which indicate this particular movie, this is .mov, contains only 46 frame. And if we have the frame number moving from 0 to 127, so after 45, the frame number over there will have no effect in the playback of the particular movies. Here. So we can 
modifies the command over here by using the number 45 which indicate the 46 frame of that particular video So if we do the playback again by controlling the frame from zero towards the end of this one, you can use the whole length of this horizontal slider to control the playback of this particular movie in a manual way. And that number of the slider control on the right hand side will be this particular number 46 we have only 46 frames to control with this slider so these are the basic command we can make use of to control the playback of a digital video and of course you can use similar approach in the last exercise when we are working with pix image to use an open panel command over here to choose whichever video you would like to include in your display rather than the hard coded open command right here okay so that is the basic way we can make use of the playback of a digital video so in the next exercise we'll try to look into other ways to play around with the live video with the webcam in attached in your computer